time to break down to his first return from fracturing his ribs. And this was going to be, I'm going to try to not make it a long one, but there's a lot to talk about in this video. What is up, Finn fans? Like I said, <clears throat> there is a lot to get to in this video. Uh, a lot of good, a lot of bad. Um, but this is going to be a good film breakdown, especially going to really dissect Tua Tonga Vailoa. Uh, I'm going to be just as critical of him that I am Jacoby Brissett. But I already kind of scrolled through this and I kind of already did my thing. And uh, it's a thousand times better than Jacoby Brissett. You could just tell from the fact that we drive down the field on the first drive and score a touchdown. It was just a thousand times better. Pocket presence, all that stuff. Uh, defense, there's some things we're going to point out, but even with Tua, there's some things I'm going to point out. Running game, I'm going to point out some things. Uh, but before we jump into that, I really quickly have to shout out a new patron in Mason Fay. Uh, thank you so much for joining, bud. I greatly appreciate it. If you guys want to join the Patreon or become a member, you can hit the join for a member, and the Patreon is linked below. Also, real quick news, uh, Vince Beagle is back on the Miami Dolphins. Uh, I think I think he's on, they got rid of Griffin to, they, they released Griffin from the practice squad to add Vince Beagle, I think, to the practice squad. Not 100%, but he is back, uh, and I'm very happy. Dolphins need some help at the linebacker course, so very happy my guy Vince is back. So, without further ado, I'm going to try not to beat around the bush too much. Uh, because I got a lot to talk about. So let's jump right into this. So this is the very first pass. The first play was an actual run, which got stuffed uh, completely. You have uh, Gazigi down here. You have Waddle here. You have Mac Collins here. And I think this is Durham Smythe. Durham Smythe is going to be running uh, a corner route. You have a, cur uh, a comeback route on my brain from these two guys. And you're going to have a post route here. So that's essentially the route combination you got. It's horribly drawn but I have to use my mouse. Uh, but you see here, and I'm, I, this is something I noticed, right? Because I hear a lot that he stares down his receivers, and I'm like, oh, I never noticed that, so let me let me really look at it. And I'm noticing now that his progression to his progressions are real quick. If it's not open, he's going to the next one real quick. And you'll see, you might not notice it here, but then we'll go to the front view, and you'll see he drops back, looks at Kaziki. He's like he's not open when he needs to, looks over, sees Waddle, dumps it off to Waddle. It's a real quick progression because Tua knows that this offensive line is straight doo-doo butter. So he needs to get the ball off quick. I think they, it was 2.6 seconds he gets the ball off real quick. And you'll see here, again, he's going to hit Waddle here on a, on a comeback route. But he, he looks at um, Gazicki on his post route, and you'll see... By the time he looks at him, I'll pause it. He's not open. I need to move on because I don't have enough time, especially with this offensive line, and you'll see throughout the game, to sit there and wait for plays to develop. Boom. So he's looking, and he's not ready. Not ready. That's literally what just happened there. <clears throat> Shifts uh, Gaskin over. Drops back, looks at him, not ready, looks over, ready, boom. Just get it off real quick. Because you saw, unfortunately, how the offensive line is. You saw how quick the pressure gets to him. Liam Eikenberg actually had a really bad, um, really bad uh, PFF rating in this game. So you could see by the time he gets open, and this linebacker actually plays the spot really well. They're doubling Kaziki. Um, he's just got to get rid of it because if not, he's he's in the way. No one's open. Gets rid of it, and then you'll see from the front view because you're like, oh, he didn't look at his first read. Kaziki was the first read, and you can see it. And I'll show you uh, if you watch his eyes here. As soon as he drops back, that's his first read. There's Kaziki on this post right here. But again, when he drops back. It's, he's not ready and he's not looking at him. So what does he do? He goes to his next read. Boom. Gets the ball off to Waddle. Get some yards out of it. So this play here is after um, a false start on Waddle. So now it is second and long because he made the five-yard pass on the false start. So now they pushed it back. Second and long. Uh, Waddle's going to do you know a motion here, essentially showing they're in zone. And they're playing far back because the first down, I think, is at the 35 
So it's second and long because of the false start here. And essentially, I'm not going to draw it, but all of these guys, so you have Gazicki here, you have Waddle here, you have Albert Wilson here, you have Matt Collins here, they're all going to be running comeback routes, all of them. They're going to get to the first down marker and they're going to turn around. What I want you to focus on, uh, they'll pretty much get open, playing the soft zone. They just don't want them to get the first down. And Dolphins are just playing very conservative at this point. What I want you to watch is Tua. Because, again, Liam Eikenberg had a horrible day. And I heard this a lot that, oh, it's just the Jaguars. So any good that I'm going to point out from Tua, that's the rebuttal I'm probably going to get from certain you know people that don't like Tua. Is it just the Jaguars? But the just the Jaguars got 20 pressures on Tua. And he didn't allow one sack because you'll see why. Here's the motion from Waddle. Drop back. If you look at uh, Liam Eikenberg here, just... just it's just bad. It's just bad. Uh, sees it. And at this point, they all start making their, their comebacks here. Here's the first down. At the 35, they all start making their comebacks to be able to get the first down. And watch Tua. Steps up. Now, I've also heard, and I know you guys hate me saying this, but I'm just talking about things I've heard, that he doesn't know how to shrug off sacks. Shrugs off that sack, and he finds Waddle here. It's a small window with a guy pulling him down. A small window to get it to him. He could get it. He could dump it off here to Malcolm Brown and have him potentially come up, make a tackle, or whatever. But he tries to get that pass off, and this small window fits it right into him. First down. And what I love, and, I'll, and we'll look at it from the other angle, is his pocket presence and his pocket awareness to step up, shrug off the sack, just a horrible block here from Liam Eikenberg, steps up, has him pulling on him. So he's now pulling on his throwing arm and still gets that ball off while falling right where it needs to be. These, Those are the things that if he just gets a little bit more aggressive with his passes and we'll and I'll show you with that and if he just just works on a few things those are the plays there that show me he can be something those are the plays there that show me let me see what he can do outside of 11 games that play right there is one of them shrugs and it grabs his throwing arm shrugs it off as he's falling darts it gets a first down could it like I said uh, Jacoby Brissett's dumping it off to Malcolm Brown. Him, on the other hand, no. Real quick decision, get that ball out. So on this play, he's going to hit Gazicki, uh on a crossing route. It's like a deep crossing route, deep in route uh, at about the 40. And at this point, there, he does have Albert Wilson open on a curl route or a comeback route, whatever you like to call it. And he looks at him, right? I think that is his first read because when he drops back, that is the first thing he looks at. And he has him. I think what this is what I'm thinking. Again, I don't know what's going on into his head, but I'm thinking here he he has time in the pocket. He steps up and he has time in the pocket. So he says to himself, I could throw the five yarder or I can wait for Gaziki to get open, which he eventually does, and he gets it to him. So boom, right here, right? You could just drop it off here to Albert Wilson and let him do his thing. But he realizes I got a I got a nice blocking going on. You know, Malcolm Brown came over, made the block, step up, because now he's looking at Kaziki, and he sees uh, the linebackers biting on whatever decision he's making. But again, got Albert Wilson sitting there. He could drop it off to him whenever. Well, now he's starting to come up. Steps up into the pocket, and he sees, I just got to throw that ball right here. I just got to put it right there, and he's going to make the catch. And what does he do? Puts it right there, makes the catch, first down. Like I said, he he could have dropped it off to Albert Wilson uh, and hoped that he got the first down. But he, he I, again, this is me assuming he had enough time in the pocket to let the play develop. So he let the play develop. He trusts Gazicki. He knows Gazicki. I'm going to let him get open instead of just dumping it down. Let me trust it and let the play develop. That is a big difference between him and Jacoby Brissett. Jacoby Brissett, like that, would have thrown it to the first read, which was Albert Wilson. Because, again, he looks at Albert Wilson. And I'll show you in the uh, in the reverse view. He looks over at Albert Wilson, and then he waits for Gazicki. You'll see. First read is Albert Wilson on that curl route. Drop back. Boom. That's his first read. Albert Wilson on the curl route. And it's open. 
But he thinks to himself, I got a pretty clean pocket. They're blitzing 37. Malcolm Brown's coming over. He's going to pick up the blitz. I got a pretty clean pocket. I can wait for Gizicki to get open. And he waits for Gizicki to get open and lets it rip. That's what I'm thinking. I could be wrong. Tua could just be like, nah, whole time. I was just like, I don't know. But I, that's what I'm thinking. He has a clean pocket. Let me wait for the better play to develop than just here, on the other hand. He is he has the option. You can either hand the ball off to Malcolm Brown, see if he can, you know, get the touchdown, or you could throw it to Waddle. Um Waddle's just quick slam to the inside. Just quick slam. And it's not a post because a post would be a little bit longer into the post. It's quick slant. Um, and he's doing a pre-snap read right here. Let's see if I can get it before he snaps it. Because he looks over. I couldn't get it. He looks over and he sees that this corner is playing about five yards off Waddle. And he knows that Waddle is going to be running a slant. So his thought process is, I think this is Brown. might be Gaskin. Um, screw it. I'm just throw it to him. And he cancels out the, the, the run option, and he just bullets to him for a touchdown. Boom. Real simple. Touchdown. You're going to play five yards off on this read? That's your read all day, every day. Just throw it to him. It's open. Easy touchdown. So this play doesn't really equate to any points for the Jaguars. I think they eventually punt it to the Dolphins. Um, but this is just something that, again, I'm rubbing my face when I cut back to me, but it, so it's, just, it's single high safety, but it's not a single high safety because you have Brandon Jones here. He's going to drop back. So, it was, you know, it's a cover two. Uh, and you have Jerome Baker here. Who's going to be covering the tight end, but is he covering the tight end? <laughs> because this is where they get a big chunk yardage here. And you'll see what I'm talking about, right? Tight ends in motion. So, Jerome Baker, it's your responsibility, my man. And it looks like it's man coverage. So, you know, Noah is going to have this receiver, receiver, receiver. I think Coleman, um, Nick Needham, like I said, cover two, two high safety, two linebackers. It's nickel. Uh, sending four here. And you're playing two yards off. You're playing two yards. It's zone, actually. I do apologize. It's zone. It's it's not man. It's zone. Uh, and you're playing about two yards off. Easy play. And then you good luck catching up to him. Stop playing zone. Stop playing zone and play. If, if I'm the Dolphins, I stop playing zone. And when it comes to certain like if it comes to a, a big wing eye formation which essentially is like two three tight ends then i put the linebackers in there but if it's a nickel formation where you have three receivers and a tight end uh i'm i'm probably not having any linebackers on the field they're they're get they just can't they can't we have no good coverage linebackers and you'll see because this is probably andrew van ginkle's worst game so this play here, it's now seven to three. I lied; they actually got a field goal on that last drive. Uh, it's seven to three here, and you have Gaziki here. He's going to be running uh, a crossing route, essentially behind the linebackers. You're going to have um, Waddle down here. He's going to be running a short route over here. And you have two receivers at the top of the screen, kind of running their their deep routes. Tua is first read is going to be over on the right. I think it is to Albert Wilson. I think Albert Wilson is all the way up here. I don't understand why it's not more zoomed out. But again, doing best with what I got. Uh, his first read, I think, is Albert Wilson. I think Albert Wilson is running a go route. If it's one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to throw it. Then he comes back over, and then he realizes he has Gaziki crossing the middle wide open, and he puts a beautiful touch pass over the linebacker to get that to uh, Gaziki. And you'll see here. And he also gets blown up as soon as he throws it, right? So, sorry, it's uh, Durham Smythe is the, the route here. So you can see he's looking here to see one of these two are getting open. Like I said, you got the curl here. He could throw it right to Waddle right here, right? And just Jesse Davis. And he has to, he wants to lead Kaziki. So he needs to throw it here. But he has to throw it behind these linebackers. And he just puts just the right, just ah, gets it right to Gizicki. Gizicki gets the yardage, jump kicks the guy right in the face, and just how you do. 
let's see what happens with uh, Jesse Davis on this play. Let's watch Jesse Davis here because Tua gets blown up as soon as he throws this. Fantastic job. Just just mm, fantastic job. Let's it go. And then there you go. <laughs> I think he's all right. I That fractured rib seems to be all right. He probably, probably hurt, but he's all right. So this is the play. Stop touching your face, Doug. This is the play after the Jacoby Brissett uh, play action. A nice pass to Durham Smythe here. This is one of the plays that he might have had a touchdown here to a got to throw this, bud. He got to throw this because he's going to have Albert Wilson here running a, a deep post route. It's play action. He's going to you know fake it to Ahmed, and he's going to have Albert Wilson. And he has a clean pocket. It's not like he's got pressure on him, right? Play action here. Throw it. You have him. This isn't even one-on-one -on -one here. He's, he's literally shadowing his man. But he, he dumps it off. You know, the pressure gets into his face. Let's see if I can go back enough that it won't go all the way back. Um, but he, he, he got to hit Albert Wilson here, right? Play action here. Jesse Davis, just the most liabil liability on the offensive line ever. Boom. Right there. Get it to Albert Wilson. Throw that to Albert Wilson, and it's most likely a touchdown. But he dumps it off to Ahmed, which... <sighs> Get it to Albert Wilson here, dude. Come on. That's a touchdown. Even even you get it to uh, Gazicki, it's a possible touchdown. you got to throw it. I don't know if you didn't see him. Because the angle, I don't think the, the other angle is going to be behind him. I think it's going to be in front of him. So we're not going to be able to really see if he sees um, Albert Wilson. Because Albert Wilson ain't tall either. Uh, but he kind of already made his decision. And he could have had a touchdown there to Albert Wilson gotta throw that those are the plays you gotta make to shut a lot of people up to a so as much as i uh get on the defense this is actually a really good play by coleman here it's gonna be a big crossing route uh and trevor lawrence has too much time in the pocket to let this route develop from this this side of the field all the way to over here for him to throw the ball but coleman plays it perfectly and probably should have picked it off. Because, again, at this point, it's 10 to 3. Dolphins are up by 7. You pick this off. It's a potential pick 6 here. And you'll see, right? Let me rewind it just a little bit. We'll count how long uh, Trevor Lawrence has in the pocket. 1, 2, 3, 4. <laughs> Too much time. He even could probably hit this guy for an easy touchdown. But you see Coleman, oh, I'll get another angle on it. He should, have, he should have picked that off. He should have picked that off. We'll look at it from this angle. Again, just no pressure. And they sent four. They dropped Van, uh, Andrew Van Ginkle into coverage, which they need to stop doing that because he's not good at it. That's in, it, hit, it hits him in the hands. You got to pick that off. That's Xavier Howard. He picks it off. Because that man has sticky fingers. This is just a beautiful run by um, Malcolm Brown. The lane that that is, that is created here is just a thing of beauty. And again, if I'm going to tear him down, I need to show the good as well. Great blocking here. You got the linebacker coming over. Malcolm Brown just gets out of there before it, it hits. Just a great lane. Great run. Could be better, but it's great. 15-yard run. I'm going to show that off and I'm going to be happy about it. So this is the second and five play that... Um, if you guys remember, I talked to Big O about this. I'm not touching my face. I'm talking to Big O about this, and he doesn't want Albert Wilson on the team anymore. And he's made mistakes. And on this, it's a play action here. It looks like Malcolm Brown goes to the wrong side of the play action. Uh, you have Albert Wilson here is going to be running a curl route. The first down is the 40, right? It's, it's second and five after the run. The first down is the 41, actually. I think we had the ball on there, 49. So it was a four-yard run, so it is second and six, Doug, you big dumb. Uh, so it's the 41. He's going to run a curl route, and he's going to get on the ball. But watch the running back. <laughs> Went to the wrong side on the play action, right? There's the first down. Your guy, 
I'm pointing, but you can't even see where I'm pointing, so I'll use the mouse. Your guy, here's the first down, the 41. Right here. There's the first down, the 41. Your guy that has any chance of tackling you right now is five yards off. Tua knows it. Tua says, I'm going to get you the ball. Let's get the first down. Let's have another play. I get you the ball. All right. By the time we get you the ball, here's two guys. Plant your foot. Drive forward. What does he do? Where in God's green earth are you going? It went from potentially being a third and one a third and possibly two to now a third and five. We gained one yard off of a four yard pass. <clears throat> so this is a third and two play that everyone was screaming about. <laughs> I even was screaming about it. I'm telling them, run! Just get the first down, man! But it's third and two. The Dolphins defense held the Jaguars to a three and out. Again, the score is still ten to three. Uh, first down markers on the 28. It's going to be a play action here. And then he's going he's to get pressure on him. Not even play action, sorry. He's going to get pressure on him. He's going to step up. And you see Waddle here, right? He can drop the ball off here. And then Waddle, it was across and around here. The other thing I notice, um, they're going to stop putting so many receivers in the same vicinity. It's just it's dumb. And I noticed that this offense and the offensive corner does it a lot. It's dumb. Stop putting the same receivers in the same vicinity. But Tua's going to roll out. And he's going to block. And just run. I know we're all saying run. Just run for the first down. For the love of God, just run for the first down. But if you look, you see what Tua is seeing. And you see why he doesn't run for the first down. Because you have Waddle right here. And you have this the the corner here chasing him. He puts, and he's running to his left. And this is where he makes these good throws. And it's the one time he doesn't make the good throw rolling out to his left. But if he hits him on this pass, it's a touchdown. And again, at that point, if the pick six happened, or it's a lot of ifs and buts. Like if, what is the saying? If my aunt had balls, she'd be my uncle. Um, I just really wish he made this throw. Please. Like you can see what he's trying to do. I'm just going to toss that ball up to him. But he, he leads him too much. He leads him a little too much. And I remember when we all saw it happen, we were like, why didn't you run for it? And at the end, when I screened that, I saw why he did it. And he just, he led him too much. He kind of slowed down. Again, it's not Waddle. I'm not, I'm not blaming Waddle. But if we go back a scutch, you'll see he kind of slows down. And then he speeds it up. If Tua just put the ball where it needed to be, easy touchdown. Dolphins are up 17-3. to three. And you could see he knows it because he gets so mad at himself that he's like, I had six, which would have gave him three touchdowns on the day after, you know, the other touchdown. He would have, ah, oh, being up 17 to three, up two touchdowns, that completely changes the dynamic of the game. Got to make those throws to a, again, you just got to make those throws. Another play where the offensive line does actually a pretty good job and it uh, allows for Tua to wait and make the read he wants to. So again, this is the play right after the potential the potential bad throw for what could be a touchdown. And uh, you're going to have Matt Collins here. He's going to be running, I think it's all the way up at the 10. It's up at the 10. Uh, running an in route. You're going to have Gazicki here also running an in route. And I think you have Wally here running an out route. Uh, he has the... Um, luxury of waiting for the better pass to get open and that's what he does here because if you watch it you'll see that Gaziki does get open right oh they're all in routes right he gets stumbled a little bit and he gets open you can put this ball there but he has the opportunity to wait for mac hollins which is the deeper route to get open he gets it to the 10 so in hindsight you're like run for it 
And then when he makes that, you're like, all right, all's forgiven. But now I'm like, make that pass. And that's a touchdown. So this is third and goal. He's going to dump it off to um, Gaskin over here. It's going to be, he's going to come out and he's just going to stop here. It's inaccurate pass. Uh, and again, at this point, it's 10 to 3. Love to be up 17 to 3. You're going to see at the point of him throwing it, everyone's pretty much covered. Um, he's going to run it in. Everyone's pretty much covered, and you could see where he put that ball. If he put the ball where it needed to be, which is right in his chest, I think Gaskin gets the touchdown. I think Gaskin has one guy to beat for the touchdown, and he easily gets the touchdown. But he leads him out. He leads him out a little too far here. He should have hit him right in the numbers. So this is first and 10 from the Dolphins' 29-yard line. Um they converted a few plays. The punting from Plardy wasn't great this game, so they got the ball starting on the Dolphins 49. And the play we're going to watch here is going to be right up here. It's going to be the matchup um, against Noeg Benogany. It's just going to be a go route. He's just going to run. And I think Trevor Lawrence is like, I heard Noah sucks. I'm just going to throw the ball up, see what happens. A 50-50 man. I trust my guy in Jones. And he doesn't he doesn't have him beat. Noah Benogany's with him the whole way. But he just tosses it up. And Jones looks up for the ball. Noah doesn't until the very last minute and then just gets mossed. Look at it from another angle. See if he could have done any better or if it was just a good catch and throw. I was in a bad position. It's a good throw, but he was just in a bad position. Noticing with Tua that if he gets time in the pocket, if he gets a clean pocket, uh, he will wait for the better, bigger play to develop. So it's going to be a deep in route from um, Mac Hollins. You're going to have Durham Smythe here just coming on a curl route. He could hit Smythe. Smythe does get open first. But he waits for Mac Hollins to get open because he has the time to, right? Boom, he's open. Boom, hit Durham Smythe. Yeah, the first down's at the 35. You're going to get the ball to him at the 31. He's out of position. He's kind of biting in, wouldn't make the tackle. But boom, just get the ball to him. But look at the time. He has time in the pocket. So he's thinking to himself, I know Mac Hollins is going to be running up a little bit past the first down. Let me get the ball to him. He waits. And then he sees Mac. He throws the ball before Mac even cuts in. If you look, right, Mac hasn't even cut in yet. He hasn't even made his cut to the in. He's already thrown it. Ball's already coming out. Hasn't he? It's that anticipation. And that is the biggest difference that I have noticed between Jacoby Brissett, who is a six year vet, to a Tonga Vailoa, who is an 11 game vet, I guess you can say. The anticipatory throws from Tua versus Jacoby Brissett just waiting, waiting. And then when they're finally open, he waits a little longer. He is throwing that ball before Mac Collins even makes his cut for the end route. And then when he does, the ball's there. Big play. Gets the ball to the 35, 45, gets out of bounds because it's under the two minutes. And I think we only have one timeout left. So it is second and 15. Uh, it was first and 15, first and 10, and then there's a false start. So now it's second and 15, and this is on the coaches. This play is on Boyer, if he's the defensive coordinator, calling the defensive plays, or this play is on um, Brian Flores, if he is calling the defensive plays here. Because they're playing zone, it is second and 15. They are playing zone, and you're going to see Jalen Phillips here drop back into coverage. Stop making Jalen Phillips drop back into coverage. Have him just be a pure pass rusher. Looks like they're setting the house at Trevor Lawrence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You send seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a man on a man. And they don't. They send four. And they drop him back. And look. He's going to play over in his zone here. He's dropping back, playing the deep zone. Jalen Phillips is going to be playing the zone here. And just why? Why? 
Second and 15. Why do you have Jalen Phillips dropping back into coverage? Because that's on Jalen Phillips. That's his zone. Should not have let it happen. Why is he dropping back that far into coverage? Why do you have him coming all the way back here? He's a pass rusher. Just have him be a pass rusher. Five. And just this this is this is what I'm talking about with the poor tackling. Because they eventually score, right? The Dolphins are up at this point 13-10. And just the poor tackling here. <sighs> Drives me nuts. Right? Landon Roberts again, always reaching for a tackle. Doesn't get it. And then, ready? One miss. Two miss. Three miss. Four, five. What happened? What happened to this Dolphin defense? Well, look at it another angle. Because it, it's bad. It's so bad. This is when I was like, what kind of tackling is that? Again, Atlanta Roberts come in. Gets blocked by a tight end. Right? Huge lane here. Boom. Brandon Jones. Bad angle. Completely stiff arm. No Benogany. Here comes uh, Javon Holland. Nothing. Then you got Andrew um, Jalen Phillips smacking him around. You got <laughs> Coleman. Just not. If he would have scored there, it would have drove me nuts. But spoiler alert, he eventually does score. And now the Dolphins are down uh, 17 to 13. First and 10, uh, they got the ball back after they you know, gave up the touchdown. Down 17 to 13 here. This is going to be a handoff to Malcolm Brown. Um, and this right here is what makes me question why they think they should have run it on fourth and one. And we'll get to that play. Um, because Malcolm Brown just doesn't know how to hit lanes. We need a running back. Like, I like Miles Gaskin, but he's not the back that can... He's not Derrick Henry. I'd love to have Derrick Henry on our team because he constantly gets positive yardage. Comment below. Do you see you see good run blocking here? I see good run blocking here. I'll show you the lanes. You got a lane here. All right? You got a lane here. You got a lane here. Now, you don't want this one. You got this big man here. He, he is going towards this one. You can see it. You can see by his pivot. You don't want this one. Here you go. It's, it's this is this is the promised land right there. Do it up. But unfortunately, even more, right? Even more at this point. Hit that lane I was talking about. Bam! You got one guy to miss. You're bigger than him. Just hit this lane right here. Plant that foot and go. Oh. He plants his foot and he goes into a bunch of defenders. We need a running back. So this is another play. And again, I give praise where it's due and I criticize where it's due. I talked about the potential touchdowns that Tua left on the field. He needs to do better in that situation. But there's plays like this that I'm like, he if he can just make the make the throws when they need to be made, it'll it'll change this game. And he does plays like this where he makes the throws when they need to be made. He's a little inconsistent with his throws. After ten, at 10 games, I've seen a ton of quarterbacks with their first 10, 11 games make inconsistent throws. Hell, Trevor Lawrence did it in this game. I've seen it, and I've seen him get better as time goes on. And this is a play right here that shows me, everyone keeps saying, I don't see the it. I don't see the it. This play right here, it is third and seven, right? We are now down 17 to three. We have the ball on our own 40. There was a false start that pushed us back to a scrambles to make it a third and manageable because if not, it would have been a third and it was second and like 
12, second and 13. He scrambles, makes it a manageable third and seven. Still pretty hard here. And just at this point, right, no one's open. No one's running their routes yet. No one's really open. By the time that Waddle here starts to run his in route, Tua, who is right in there a little bit, is already got a, a pocket collapsed around him, right? He is now, <laughs> he has now stepped up into the pocket that he could step up into. And at this point, he sees that, I think, I'm pretty sure this is Waddle, running this in route past the first down marker. He sees it happening and he literally has a blocker defender behind him, a blocker defender to his left, in front of him, and to his right. He is completely surrounded by his offensive line. And he still manages to get this pass off into a perfect spot. And we'll see it from the other angle so you can see what I'm talking about, how he is completely encased and converts the first down. Right? Send five. You got pressure up his in his face pressure in his face and he still is like i have pressure from my left my right i'm going to step up and austin jackson does a really good job of coming around and getting that blocker that's a good play by austin jackson there's a that right there you're like it's a little glimmer of hope it's a little glimmer of hope that he might be a good left guard but look at the throw he makes with the he Defender in his face, and he puts it right where it needs to be. Man's all over him. Should be a penalty. Man's all over him. Puts it right where it needs to be, and Waddle makes that catch. I've, I've heard some really bad things and really dumb things on social media and Twitter and about Waddle. I'm just getting ignored. it. But great play. And that right there is one of the plays, and I showed you another one. I showed you a few in this game. But I, like I said, I've showed you bad plays where he should have made the throw, and it would have got us touchdowns, and it would have put us in the lead to play differently. And I've also showed you plays where he stays in the pocket and makes the throws that need to be made. The big boy throws. The it throws. The, all right, keep doing that, man. Keep doing that. 11 games he's played. He can grow, and he can keep doing that. It's going to be a good quarterback in the NFL. So this is the pass interference on uh, Matt Collins up here. It's first down after that play. It's literally the next play. Tua has got time in the pocket. You know, He's like, I got one-on-one. -on -one. Matt Collins. He trusts Matt Collins. Matt Collins can make these catches. Makes the catch. I do not see. We'll look at it from another angle. Maybe I'm biased. Maybe I'm blind. I do not see him fully extend the elbows and push off on that defender. I do not know where the offensive PI is. I look at it from this angle. I don't see it. Bad snap. I don't go down and get it. I was just saying, oh, bad snap. Get the f Let's rewind it. Maybe I'm maybe I'm biased. Let me let me rewind it a little bit. Let me rewind it. I don't think I have slow mo in here. Okay, so they're fighting for the ball. Hands are intertwined. Get out of here. Get out of here. Where was their PI? Oh my goodness, that is such a bad call. That is such a bad call. So this is the play. This is the interception. Um, Dolphins, you know, strip sack uh, fumble from uh, Christian Wilkins gets the ball back from Trevor Lawrence. We had the ball on our own 34-yard line. Uh, this is a play that Tua, he, he needs to make the throw. It's just that plain and simple. He, he tries to put a touch on it, but... <laughs> I don't understand why he does like he throw this why aren't you throwing this why are you waiting for this throw this this is a Jacoby Brissett play and it breaks my heart to say that but this is a Jacoby Brissett play you know play action here you have a clean pocket there is no one near Matt Collins 
No one near Matt Collins. You were down 17-13 still. Throw it, man. You know he's going to run a curl route. If you need to wait another second for him to make that route, you can wait it. Throw it. I don't understand what his thought process was at this point because he should have thrown this ball. But he waits. See how he did that? I call it the Jacoby Brissett. See how he did a lot of th th with his feet? He waits. And again, all right, you had the time to wait. And I talked about other plays where he has time. He'll take it to take the better play. He has time. He's open. This is potentially a touchdown. He just has to beat 42. Make the throw. I showed you plays where he has defenders around him. It is third and long, and he makes the throw. I've showed you plays where he's making the throw. And then I show you plays where he doesn't. And this is one. He floats it. What? I... Like, I dumb dumbfounded a little bit. Even when I was watching the game, I'm like, what was that? Just make the throw. If anything, throw it to Matt Collins earlier and keep on keeping on. Here, this is going to be a pass to Durham Smythe over the middle in a seam route. Uh, I absolutely love this throw. Again, there. I, th this might be the third or fourth play that shows me he has what it takes. He just needs to chain them together and he needs to be more decisive and better with the throws. But this throw here, you have Durham Smythe here. It's going to be a seam route. And where he places that ball is just perfect here, right? Right up the gut. He sees he has it. And he throws it away from the defender. He doesn't throw it on this side where the defender could just smack the ball out. He throws it away from the defender. Great play. Great play, great pass. Love it. Also, we get... Uh, Fly for taunting. For false start, this is first and long. Dolphins are sending a blitz. I don't understand why they didn't blitz more. And this is a play where if it wasn't Justin Coleman and if it was Xavier Howard, this is pick six. And Dolphins go up 27 to 17. But unfortunately, it is Coleman. He gets a ton of pressure in his face. He lets it rip and just... <sighs> That's pick six. If that's Xavier Howard, he picks that off. He takes it to the house. Dolphins are up 27-17. This is the fourth quarter. I think that it is about 10 minutes, give or take, maybe nine minutes in the fourth quarter. Um, he jumps on that, and he picks that off. I'll even show you uh, the wide angle on it. He picks that off all day, every day, if, that, if that's Xavier Howard covering. Not having Byron Jones and Xavier Howard in this game, I think that is also another reason why the Dolphins lost this game. Because there would have been so many turnovers. Trevor Lawrence, as good as he is in college and how, how much promise he has, he's a turnover machine in the NFL right now. And if we had Byron, we had... So this is what leads up to going forward on fourth and one. Um, and this is just a, another play where... It's a drop, and it's a drop at a crucial point, and you'll see. Because after this, he tries to get it to Gaziki for the first, and Gaziki's just short. But you, Ahmed, you got to catch that, my dude. You catch that, and you turn up, that's a first down. Again, it is 2020 at this point. Tied game, you get upfield, you get, a, you know, give us the opportunity to get uh, in field goal range and win this game, and he just drops it. So the Dolphins' worst-case scenario, it'll be a third and two right here. But we all know next play, Kaziki comes out just short, and then we run the ball on fourth and one. But overall, uh, we all know how it ends. Uh, I don't need to break down the ending of that. Um, this is going to be, like I said, this is going to be a long video. I'm going to try to keep it under 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, there's a, but there's a lot I wanted to talk about. There's a lot I wanted to show. And my biggest thing with Tua, and this is my biggest thing with Tua all through his career with the Dolphins, and it hasn't been long. It hasn't been long. Again, 11 games he's played for us. Inconsistency, inconsistency on the good throws. He makes really good throws, and then all of a sudden he misses what could be good throws. Very inconsistent. If he can chain together that inconsistency, Tua could be a very good quarterback in this NFL but it's the inconsistencies that I'm noticing. Again, 
He'll stay in the pocket. He'll have guys all around him on third down, the pivotal third down, and he'll get that ball out there on a third and seven to Waddle first down. But then all of a sudden he's rolling out to his left. He has Waddle for a touchdown and misses it. See what I'm saying? It's inconsistent. He can just chain them together, be more consistent with his passes to it can be real good. Because we've seen it. Pressured 20 times in this game, not sacked once, made some good throws, missed some good throws. Uh, And also we saw on the defense just horrible tackling. And horrible zone. Stop with the zone. Stop dropping Jalen Phillips back into coverage and tackle better. Stop letting them get an extra, you know, four or five yards after after contact. Please, for the love of God. Uh, can this team be fixed? It's a lot of discipline stuff. It's a lot of fundamental stuff. They should have won this game against Jacksonville. Jacksonville is not better than the Dolphins. Yes, they beat them, and the score says differently, Doug. But it's a, the Dolphins beat themselves. If you want my honest opinion after watching the film, the Dolphins beat themselves. Bad coverage, uh, bad throws, drops. Dolphins beat themselves. They left too much on the field. But comment below. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, Other than that, guys, I'll see you tomorrow with the uh, picks. And then breaking down the Dolphins taking on the Houston Texans. Oh, my God. I'm not looking forward to that. But like usual, guys, stay classy. And fins up.